Hi, this is Mark Snyder with Worship Song Band. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about multi-channel output mode. Um, I'm also going to uh, show you this device that I uh, got a hold of. Um, this is called an ESI Gigaport HD+. Plus. Um, if you look at the back end of this device, you'll see eight RCA outputs. Um, so what this device does is it gives you eight channels of output audio, which you can use with Worship Song Band. Um, I've done testing with Windows and Mac and, and had good results. Uh, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about that. Um, why this is interesting is that um, this device is actually, um, what I found the, the least expensive eight channel output audio device that you can get. Um, I got it from a UK reseller uh, who would just ship to the US. Um, paying 85 UK pounds, which um, shipped to my door, this was $105. So $105 for eight channels of output. These are RCA connectors on the back, which means they're an unbalanced output, which means you're gonna wanna, um, if you use this device, put it close to your soundboard. Um, so uh, I have here Worship Song Band version 6.0. And I wanted to talk a little bit about this new GUI we've put into 6.0. Um, so what this GUI does is it basically um, gives you a graphical way to deal with what before you had to do with the uh, um, a text file called mastertracks.txt. Um, instead, you have this, this routing grid here that you can use instead. Okay, so the way this works is if you have multi-channel output on a PC, you're gonna wanna use the ASIO mode and then your driver should say Giga, which means that it's the uh, the Giga port. Um, uh, so in, in, in any other multi-channel output would really work the same. And so what this grid is, is basically uh, an assignment of all the stems in your library. So what will happen is when Worship Song Band starts, it will collect all of the stem names that you've got in your library. So if you, if you look at one of your songs here, look at the mixer, you'll see these stem names across here. Those names are what shows up in this table here. And uh, until you assign them, they're all going to say off. Um, remember, this is only if you're doing multi-channel output. If you're just doing split audio out, you don't need to worry about any of this. Um, so they're all going to stay say off. Um, there are six stems here that you'll never see in your library, but that are built into Worship Song Band. Uh, stereo mix left and right, which is the standard mix that would be on the uh, channel one of uh, multi-channel out, band mix left and right, which is the band mix um, on your uh, on your song, the band mix is over here. It basically mixes some instruments into your clicks and cues, if you wanna do that. Um, and then the names of individual stems as found in your library, they're all capitalized. This grid goes out to 16, because you can have up to 16 channels if you connect a 16 channel audio interface. Um, in this case, I've got an eight channel interface, so I've, I've uh, assigned eight. And then all you do to uh, assign your stems is to uh, just click a stem and assign it over. So like if I wanted to put vocals on channel one, I could click that and then click it over there and it would move the vocals to channel one. What this does is it's saving this setting for your entire library. So, so basically, you only have to do this setup one time, and as long as your library uses those same names, your your um, songs get assigned to those channels. So, every no matter what song I load, I'll have my acoustic guitars over here, my bass and electrics on two, my vocals on three, my drums on four my keys and bells and loops and stuff on five, pads on six, I'll move that pad over there, cues and click on seven and eight. 
So, so this is a global assignment, a global routing table. So, um, as long as so you should always have consistent as long as you have this set up um, for everything in your library. And if you load a new track into your library and it has a name that doesn't appear in this list, it'll come in the off section first, and then you can go ahead and assign it. And then as your library grows, you can just save them over like that. Okay. Um, so for the Gigaport, you have, uh, it should say Giga ASIO mode. Um, and I'm going to show you one more thing, um, at least on Windows, to get the best quality for the Giga port here. Um, there's this little config menu that comes with the driver that uh, you can install with the software. Um, the sample rate for eight channels is 44100 16-bit audio, which that's kind of like CD quality audio. And you want to set this latency number all the way to the top, to 512. Um, and that, uh, if, if you get some audio uh, hesitation or skipping, that latency number will help you. Um, on, on Mac, all this stuff kind of defaults and you just uh, hook it up and, and it works. On Windows, you have to use the ASIO mode and you have to do the settings that I showed you. Um, and anyway, so, so that's it uh, for the multi-channel out. Um, you can, uh, if you get Worship Song Band 6, you can check this out and give it a try. Um, and if you do end up wanting to buy one of these things, uh, let me know how you do with it. I'd, I'd like to hear uh, your experiences and with this or any other uh, multi-channel audio output devices. Uh, like I said, this one just happens to be really cost-effective.